welcome back guys to part 17 version 2 of our top down you could say construct 3 rpg series now we left off last with our inventory part 1 of 17 we're going to be doing part 2 so just a recap there's our inventory hud movable tabs and we're going to be populating this with items we pick up okay so that is going to be the purpose but it gets just a heads up little disclaimer if you want to call it that it's going to get messy so please stay with me now as always as you guys know i like to prep the scene first so we're going to run through the prep work and then we'll hit the code immediately right so back over to our main event sheet there's a number of things that i've done i want to hit the global layers first because it'll make more sense so i've gone ahead firstly and added another layer which is going to be called the inventory tooltip right this is just a layer above the inventory purely for a number of reasons but we'll get to that shortly on this hud i've gone ahead and I'm going to set the parallax to in fact the zero zero so it stays within its range okay i've gone ahead and set it initially to invisible all right so i suggest you to go and do the same thing then over back onto the inventory i've gone and added two things this one little sprite and i named it object inventory slot or shortened it objective inventory slot whatever you want to call it and i went and i added four instance variables the first one a slot id the second one a slot name an item name next one item quantity and then a sort priority all of these is one or one of them is a string the others are numbers so number name quantity and then priority this is just a sort of these are the numbers and that's a string okay so you need to go and do the same just create a new sprite right click new object and make a little square and give it those parameters and go and call it the same as this if you want in the tutorial the next thing what i did was i right clicked and i insert a new object and i went and selected the sprite font okay that is going to manage my font over here with regards to the quantity i've gone and put that on the tooltip menu so here it is and i gave it two instance variables slot id which matches the name try and keep the same naming conventions because it's going to get messy and then the quantity of how many is going to be in here all i did was then went and scaled it down to 40 percent because i wanted obviously i'm working with a pixel game i needed it small right so those are the things you will have to do before we get started the next thing that i did was i went and created all the items and i went to call that objects items underscore potions inventory that way i know it correlates to this menu not items in the game to the menu that's why they're standing up and i did the same for weapons if i double click these items i gave three animations id underscore manner i want you to keep with the id underscore id underscore you don't have to but this way it's a lot easier you might get everything working one shot got my poison and i got my health okay you're going to add to this list this is going to be our list of arrays and we'll add this to the dictionary of all your different items but keep them separate in an animation separate opposed to a frame all right so that's, i did the same with weapons rusty sword and i named this one a steel sword okay so do the same and use the underscore id both of these i i um Gonna quickly jump over to did I add any instant variables? No. Okay, so there's no instant variables on here. What I then did with these two, I went and created a family, and I called that family inventory items. Over there, I went and added those two. Okay. I then went and created some family instance variables. Yeah, you can see. Slot, but everything in the family I I renamed at the back with fam. That's where I know when we write the code. It's the family I'm referring to. Okay. First one, slot underscore ID fam, which is a number. Name of the family, it's a string. The item underscore type fam. The quantity, the equip type, and the sort priority. Now, this will change. We can add different things like the alphabetical order and stuff like that. We're going to have different sorting methods. So we will be adding to this list as we go along. But just note, from our last one, we've gone ahead and created a new family of the inventory items that are going to carry all the items okay with an id underscore okay so make sure that you prep that as well when you've done that obviously i've added to my object bank 
make sure that potions is set to the potions and that the weapons is set to the weapons. I'm using the category names that I used in, in the first video. Now, to stick with your same categories, if you've got a capital W, stick with that for now. If I go back to my main, you'll see we had weapons. We're referring to everything with the, with the cases. So if I go back to the inventory, let's go back to the inventory, which was here. I had the two, remember the, these two buttons that are working under inventory. Note, weapons under this one potions the category name because we're going to be calling and inheriting these names so it's important to make sure that you stick with them if you're going to have another tab in your hud you might have tabs at the top here make sure these names what you're going to carry through to your objects are right in terms of its family type okay just to be clear again over here object bank this is the object that carries all the this little item it's got the steel sword and everything it has a family and i've set this to weapons in its family these instance variables do not belong to the sword itself but to the family okay very important now this is where things are going to get busy and i probably will just pause for you guys to catch up with over onto our global layer and i haven't done it yet we need to go and replicate all of this so we need to take this block and we're going to call this one slot one but before we do we need a copy paste okay straight on your um the next one so i might have done that a few times okay no it's fine so put this one over so it keeps the same name don't clone it just copy it and then you need to go and do this for each block so i'm going to copy again paste you get what i'm saying so i'm going to pause here quickly and then um, do that for everything Right, so I've gone ahead now and added each one. And what I also did was on every block, I went and added the slot number. So in this one, one, and then I set the priority to 100, 100 being the highest. So just one, two, three, as you can see there. So I need you to do the same. Right, so once you've gone and done and all that, and you've added the slot numbers and you've set your priority, the next thing we need to do is select our inventory tooltip. And we need to go and do the same for this inventory, you could say, which is just a sprite font, this item quantity text that's going to display how much quantity of a specific potion or whatever we have, we need to go and do the same. So I'm gonna pause here and copy mine and add the slot number starting from one across to then the rest. Right, so now that I've gone ahead and added that, I need you to select each one. You'll notice there we've got slot one. Make sure that the it corresponds with the block slots that you, you selected. Obviously it will be mixed up if you don't. Okay, the next thing is go and set each one, select them all, and go and set them to initially invisible. Here we go, just uncheck that for me so that they are invisible. Once you've done that, you're gonna go over to our main script again, and then you'll see we, we have a number of things that we do here on the pressing I. We now need to do the same with that. So we need to set the layers again here. We need to go ahead and copy this layer, paste it, and then set this layer to the layer that we have those objects. And in my case, it's called inventory. Let's just tab this out, that way we can find it. Uh, and let's look for inventory. Oh, I forgot the N in both of them. Can you believe it? So inventory tooltip. And let's set that to visible. I'm actually going to correct that. And let's set this to invisible. So let's set that to invisible. Click done. Right, fantastic then and that's actually going to annoy me so let's just go back to global layers here quickly sorry guys and let's just uh, put in the in here it'll just update the code site wide inventory and do the same here as well inventory fantastic and then just make sure that on the stage that it's done the same it hasn't so let's just rename inventory and then create a new one which we have to do and that is going to be adding another one so we're going to go add a layer at top of this and we're going to call that inventory underscore and i think it, we had tooltips i think it was tool tooltips right i think it was that let me just go double check so you have inventory inventory tool tip okay it's just tip so back to stage one and we're going to go set that to rename to tip like that and then make sure it's set to global so we go back here select that and say global yes 
and then go back to stage one and click on here and they should basically inventory oh my spelling and put the end in there we go and there's our numbers fantastic so back to our main script we can see we are now setting the tool to visible along with the whole HUD story. I, I might just do a complete this inventory here. I, when I put this into its different subclass, so that's in its own subgroup. Uh, but I'm going to add this to its own subgroup, and then I can really do a mass disable. Because what's going to happen is when I play the game, let's just go over here, and I, I um, okay, the inventory is not coming up now. That's fine. But when I, when I play this game. I'm going to be able to click on things over here and it's actually going to do something because it's not disabled the functionality of the HUD. So we'll fix that at the end. Let's not worry about that now. But I need to just fix this here as well because I said on inventory, but inventory active, where's my pressing I? Toggle. Here we go. I've just got to go, unfortunately, go and correct my silly uh, spelling errors. Um, otherwise, it's just going to upset me. Inventory. And inventory, inventory, and inventory. Okay, let's go ahead and just play that. So it is a lot of prep work in the beginning, but you'll see it'll be worth the fruits a little later. Right, cool. So I'm not supposed to see that. It's supposed to be nothing until the point that we actually update these things accordingly. All right. Now that we're back to the basics, we've prepped our work. Look, if you've missed something, guys, don't stress because as I start laying the code down, you're going to realize, oh, I don't have that object. Okay, so don't stress too much with regards to it. Right, so now that we've got that set, we're going to now begin the functions for the uh, the open function, which is, I would say, the most, probably the first or critical function um, in regards to the, um, into the populating and the updating. Uh, but so that will probably be our our biggest biggest thing moving forward right so the next thing we need to do is set obviously those quantities as you saw there. so i'm going to go over to uh, this function here where we've got the the on toggle where's my on toggle so we've got open yeah which is fine and then we've got this on pressing i we are then basically setting Okay, we've got the toggle on the buttons. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, this should though, however, I'm just thinking, if we've got the pressing of the eye that handles the toggle, this is a separate function. I'm gonna move this up. Okay, that's a separate function. When inventory is active, we're then beginning this, that's fine. And this manages other things as well. So I'm gonna move this all up so that it doesn't get confusing. Along with this one, okay. Fantastic. That's just our opening and closing of that. Right. Fantastic. So now we've got this SD1. That's what you saw. That we This is managing our tabs. And now we're going to start a, th a new function. So I'm going to go ahead here yeah, inside of this object once active. I'm going to go ahead and add a sub-event. Add a sub-event. And yeah, we're basically going to work with the family that we created. The family of the inventory items. So we're going to go inventory items. And yeah, we need to check if the category is equal to the category that we have above. All right, it's very similar to what we did here. Where we said inventory button, we need to do the same. So we're gonna go compare value, instance value, and we're gonna select the category, which in this case, I think we used, um, I think it's category, family. Did we use, no, we used the item type family. So item type family, I should have actually named that something else. And we're gonna say is equal to, we're going to go var and we're going to say active category the category that is now selected because that's the one we're dealing with i'm going to say done so we've got this here i'm going to just widen this a little bit for us so we can see right so we've got the item type is in fact selected and then we need to go and set those items to visible because obviously they're invisible but before we do that we want to ensure that the family so i'm going to add another covent Going to say add another condition and we're going to say this family where are you um, the items so let's go to items and we're going to say is not is visible where is it um, is visible because it's got to be visible visible there we go is visible so and that we're going to invert invert 
Right, fantastic. Because on this family here, where we've got these family items, what we're going to do is we want to ensure that these, none of these are visible, if that makes sense. So you can't see them. So we're going to set that to invisible for now. So if they're not visible, go and set the family items to visible. So let's just first do that. We're going to go items, inventory items, visible. And then we're going to set that to visible. Great. And then we need to do is we need to do the same by cloning this method. So I'm going to clone it. And then I'm going to invert it both of them invert and then I'm going to say in this case I'm going to set that to edit make that visible invisible sorry okay invisible and then we need to show the quantity so now that we have that that's great so I'm going to add another event and this event is going to be the text t X T quantity and then we're going to compare an instance value right so we're going to say quantity is less or equal to one done then we're going to want to this needs to actually come under inventory sorry for the under inventory I don't know why that keeps doing that less than equal to one then set to invisible Set to invisible, yeah. So we're gonna go txt, txt. And I'll explain everything now. I'm gonna say visible, visible, set to visible. And here we're gonna to go to visible, set to invisible, because it's less than one. Remember we, what we're doing here is we're hiding the, the quantity count on the HUD. Okay, so this is the one. And we can add an or, an or as well, just to be safe. Uh, I prefer another condition as always. We're going to go txt and we can just check that value as well. We can go is visible, visible. Okay, so if it is visible and it is obviously less than one, go and set it to invisible. Then I'm going to clone this and invert this as well. Right, so there we're going to go to invert and it needs to be greater than one. So in this case, it's going to be greater than one. And then we're going to set that to visible. Okay, that way we know now for sure that when the hut is zero uh, in the sense of its quantity, so if I go ahead and play this and I press I, when we have nothing here, we don't want to see a zero. That, that's the purpose of that. So we have to actually just code that in. But the minute we add one pot or a, or a dagger to this, it's going to bring that up. Okay, so this is just getting the, you could say the basics. I'm just going to pull this slightly up the side to give me a little bit more room here so that you guys can see. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm going to stop there for part two of this part 17 uh, our inventory. And our next video will pick up the functions. And that way, at least it's broken down into good segments. Otherwise, it ends up becoming very tedious, very long and drawn out. And, and you often miss things because you're, you know, one so concentrated uh, that you can miss this finer details theoretically um, when building. So it's good to take a break. It's a good break for me as well. And then I can get my mind straight back into it uh, in part three. So we'll see you guys in the next one.